Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, 10.30, Tuesday morning, 5th of May. Uh, welcome to the Camera World Facebook Live Food Photography Workshop with Canon. Uh, my name is Paul Gregory. Good morning. Welcome to you on this quite, it's overcast-ish here in lovely, amazing Stoke. Uh, um, welcome. This morning, um, we're going to have a little look at food photography at home. Um, we're all stuck at home at the moment and we all have to cook to eat. Those of you with cameras that have never turned your camera onto your food, now's your chance. I'm gonna give you a very simple, straightforward look at how you can shoot your food, your baking, whatever you happen to be doing um, at home with very little equipment, okay? A um, little thing about me, I am a food photographer. Good morning, I've got comments on the right-hand side, bear with me. Morning, Judith, good morning, Camera World. Right, so, um, Yes, so, so my name is Paul Gregory. I am a food photographer. I uh, mainly shoot uh, cookbooks, that type of thing, a bit of editorial. On the feed today, in the comments, you're all there. Hi, good morning. Sorry, guys, I can't see you all, but good morning, good morning. Lots of love hearts. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Izzy, good morning, Hilary. Good morning, Anne. Good morning, Liam. Good morning, Kit. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Sarah. Uh, two more seconds, shout outs. Gary, good morning. Samantha, good morning. Sarah, good morning. Kath, good morning. And Derek, and then we will carry on. Hi. Um, so I cannot see the comments particularly easily. Love hearts, love hearts, love hearts. Um, so we've got, um, we have Peter from Canon in the comments. Morning, Peter. How you doing, buddy? And we also have uh, someone from the marketing team of Camera World in the comments as well. So any questions regarding kit? Uh, what I'm using, can I buy this, can I buy that, they will feel that. I will keep try and keep an eye on the questions as they come in relating to food photography, but if not, panic not, I will have a look at the comments after the feed. This will obviously be available um, after the live is done. It takes about 10 minutes or so, I think, but yeah, so just keep an eye. So, hello, we are going to be looking at Now, because you're all on the camera on Facebook page, I'm assuming you all have cameras, Ta-da, 5D Mark IV, my baby. Um, but, you know, you don't need an expensive bit of kit like this to take uh, images of food. You don't, yeah? If you've got, I don't know, an old 350D, if you've got a, a, I don't know, a 650D, a 70D, an 80D, an ESR, whatever you've got, you can use. If you've got a little compact, yeah? As long as you've got a little bit of manual functionality or you know how to use the scene modes, the automated modes on the camera, you know, the portrait, the landscape, the nighttime, that type of thing, you can make those work for food photography. So, um, yeah, so, sorry, just saw, I thought I had broken it, but I haven't. Um, so, I'm <laughs> glad you just found us, Janet. Good morning. So, this is my little setup. So, what we're going to do, um, I was busy baking yesterday. I've made a lemon, a lemon drizzle cake, kind of my go-to. Um, you can do, now this is not a shoot along, guys. Yeah, by all means, if you've got your food ready, you've got your camera set up, feel free to try and carry, up, carry along with me. But it's a bit of a pace. So, use this as information, make some notes, make some mental notes, and then play with it later today okay so I'm gonna get some great images um, so you don't need a massive amount of kit you can't see this I'm not gonna turn the camera around because it's a very small flat and it's not the prettiest window we all have windows yeah we have window light great source of light natural available light that's what we're gonna shoot with today okay um, I have a table now this is one of my false tabletops I make using um, bits of wood I buy from uh, uh, DIY stores or I've, I have a tame builder who gives me stuff yay um, <laughs> and I just make my own surfaces to shoot on you need a camera kind of helpful if you're going to be taking pictures you need a camera so this is my 5d mark 4 I've got the 24 to 70 f 2.8 l on that kind of my go-to um, and food so I've made a lemon drizzle cake okay so we're gonna go through how I would set up a scene those of you will notice um, I have here like a little background board that I use. Um, you don't want to see all my books in the background. So I put a piece of white, big white board here, but you can do this however you want. Okay. I'm just make this is the thing. We're at home. We're stuck. I would normally be shooting in the studio, lots of space, clear walls, plain 
unobtrusive backgrounds, you know, no hurly burly going on, and it's just really easy to use. So at home, we've got to improvise. So that's why we have boards and bits and pieces. Right, let's go over to the camera. Yeah, I'm using the SRP as my um, as my video camera. Okay, so the SRP is streaming for you, and this is my 5D Mark IV with a 24 to 70 f 2.8 L. This is my go-to. This is my baby. Um, cool. <laughs> That's all right, Camera World. I'll let you off. Um, so, food. Now you will see on your right hand side I believe on the side of the screen you've got my iMac here so this is using one of the Canon pieces of software this is Canon EOS Utility 3 and I've just got my 5D Mark IV plugged in so you can see what's going on on the screen how I build the set etc so every time I take a shot you'll see what's going on you don't need this you can quite happily use your viewfinder use your back screen yeah this is just me making things easy for you to see so we have one lemon drizzle cake I'm just going to pop him in hell. So this is all about building, yeah? When you're setting up a food shop, a little bit of zest is just hanging over where I don't want it. So when you're setting up a food shop, you want to think about your background. You want to think about your, um, your setting. You want to think about your light. But more importantly, what's the food going on? How are you going to set it up? And what's it going to look like? So here I have my lemon drizzle cake on a lovely little... Um, white glazed uh, uh, terracotta platter really nice then I have I'm not a magician this is my piece I'm going to move this bit of board I'll talk about that board in a minute gonna, this is a lovely piece of fabric so I, I love to use linens napkins tablecloths things like that just to give you a little bit of texture so and when you're placing fabric, yeah, don't get it square and go bump like that because it looks rubbish, yeah? You want texture, you want curvature, you want all that sort of stuff. Where's the brick board from? Right, the brick backboard is, uh, you can buy these all over the places. Uh, the brick backboard, I believe, is photoboard.org. But do you know what? There are so many people making these out there. Um, have a Google, guys. Just Google photographic backgrounds. Um, I know that cam I don't think Camera World do sell them, but um, you can get them all over the place. Or make your own, yeah? Easy to print. If you've got an A3 printer, you've got a Canon A3 printer, take a picture of a wall, take a picture of something like that, use it as a background. Blur it slightly in, in your image editing software so that when it comes up in your background, it's not so sharp. But hey, this is what we do. So I'm just going to furcle with that a little bit. I'll do a little bit more when we get round to the, um, get round to the shot. Uh, you're welcome, Sharon. So, it's a lemon drizzle cake. We need lemons, yeah? When you're propping your shop, when you're building, it's a story. It's a story about your lemon cake, yeah? I made this at about 10 o'clock last night because I wanted it to be as fresh as physically possible. I didn't want to risk, you know, it not being cool and ready this morning. So I made it last night. So when I was doing that, thinking, right, what's going in it? Oh! Put that down there, shall we? Uh, this is live, guys. All these things happen. A uh, background fell down literally a couple of minutes before we um, before we started, so that was a pleasure and a joy. So think about what's going into your cake. So we have lemons. It adds to the story, yeah? and also think about what's going to complement the image. So have lemons. I'm just going to stick those in there for the second, and then we will kind of tweak around with those in a moment. It's a matter of building, playing. You look amount of times I look at stuff. Well, I um, I work with stylists, uh, food stylists, people that make food look pretty for you. Effectively, I'm a button pusher. <laughs> Love it. Um, so what you will find is a stylist makes it all look pretty, and you work as a team then to decide what looks great where and what you should have in the shot. Uh, and it's very very collaborative. When you're on your own, just use your mind. Ask kids, ask hubby, ask whoever you have around. What do you think of that? What do you think of that? Or if you're on your own, just trust your instinct. How about the worktop? Right, the worktop, this is um, one, two, three, four, five, six bits of softboard I bought at a, uh, at a DIY store ages and ages and ages ago. Sanded them down, um, connected them with metal plates at each end, and just painted them and then sanded them back a bit so you get some of the, uh, the tone from the timber coming through. 
these are great so DIY stuff. My tabletop is one of these MDF laminated beach tables, beach look tables. And when in your image, it looks orange. So I decided just to use this. So lemons are in there. The other thing I have on standby is my microplane, my microplane, microplane greater, greater, and a lemon. Other brands are available, guys. But yeah, so this is handy just to kind of grate a little bit of zest on later. Welcome, Jane. Yes, we'll let you off because you're late. So, this, I'm going to talk about this a second, it's a piece of foam board, yeah? Cheapest chips, get them online, get them in, um, well, get them online now, because you won't get them in, in hobby stores. So, yeah, and it's literally, it's, this has been around for dog's age, and literally I use it to bounce light back into the scene. So just pop that there for a minute. I'm now going to move around to the camera. I apologise, you're not going to get the best... Um, the best view of me, but hey, so I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to very quickly set up here. Now, I will talk about what camera settings I'm using. Obviously, it's the 5D Mark IV with um, my 24-105, sorry, 24-70, make your mind up, Paul, which lens are you using? 24-70 f2.8. Um, when I'm shooting food photography, I'll flip between this, my 50mm f1.2 L, which is stunning, and the 100mm macro f2.8, the Canon one, just lovely. But at the minute, for flexibility and to be able to show you what's going on, the 2470 is kind of where I start. So let's have a little look. So I'm just going to take a picture of here. So camera is set. And if you can see, hopefully, on my screen, there we go. So that's fairly, oh, I've got a dent in that. I'm going to sort that out. So camera is set in aperture priority. My ISO is low. It's ISO 100, OK? And my shutter speed is, so it's a third of it. It's, um, it's 0.3 of a second. Yes, it's very slow, which is why I'm on a tripod. You can do this handheld, yeah? But if you're going to, you need to make sure that your ISO is high enough to get you above, I would say, minimum of a 60th of a second so that you're not in camera shake territory. Tripod, so when you shoot in food, absolutely amazing because, you know, you come back, you move something around, you come back and your camera's in the same position. You've got the same look. You're not having to recreate where you were. Um, sorry, guys, Carl, I'm going off over the road. My apologies. We are live. Um, yeah, so... You know, it is, it's a really good way to go. And tripod, tripod is a tripod. As long as it keeps your camera sturdy, then you're great. I would um, generally suggest that you use a cable release um, just to pop in there. I haven't put mine in, but hey, that's fine. So here we are. So we now have your set. So you can see here, I'm hoping you can see, um, you got your cake. So you've got a little bit of that... Um, that bricky backgroundy thing coming in quite nicely. Um, you've got this little bit of fabric coming in. I'm going to move that because I don't like that gap. And when you're mo working with fabric and linens, guys, what you want to try and make sure you do is not have straight edges. Yeah, this is a rough cut piece of fabric. Let's just, just do that. So there we go. Boom. There we go. So you've, this is a rough cut piece of fabric. So it's been cut and the edges are frayed it's been it's a beautiful piece of linen and then literally you plonk it and you tweak it yeah straight edges are not great in food photography so we can see the cake i need to level up a bit but so far and what i'm going to do this is where everything goes all over the place i don't like that dink that little um kind of dent in my cake yeah this we're not I'm not a food stylist I'm a home cook yeah I bake from scratch I do everything myself at home but I'm not trained yeah I photograph what I cook when I'm working when we're doing stuff like this I do it and hey it's not gonna be perfect so let's have a look. yeah that's all right so what you can see here I'm gonna tweak the lemons around I'm loving the fact that that linen is just slightly out for me it's a little bit too ruffled actually so let's just straighten them a little bit i'm going to turn the mac around so i can see what everyone's saying 
Um, do I always shoot with EOS Utility? Yeah, do you know what I do? Um, EOS Utility, right. Talking about tethering here, guys. So, if it's, so bear with. So, talking about tethering, that is when you have your camera plugged into your Mac, uh, your computer, your laptop, your desktop. You can do it through tablets as well now. But um, what it allows you to do is see on a big screen what is actually happening rather than looking through this little three and a half inch bad boy here. And if you've got three or four in a studio working in a shoot, then you know you'll cram around like this and it's just not great. So, yeah, I do use EOS Utility, and I use EOS Utility so I can see a live view. I'm not using live view at the moment because it'll be dots and stuff all over, and it's not particularly easy. It's not particularly practical for you guys to see. But no, I do use EOS Utility, um, and then that, w and then I set that to send into other applications, shall we say, that I choose to use. But EOS Utility. Um, gives you a live view option so if the camera is mounted over the table if i was doing an aerial shot shooting down i can't see the screen i can't see what's going on so i then plug the camera into my mac or my laptop whatever i'm using in order to have a live feed so i'm fussing doing this you know i can see what's going on easy um hope that answers the question so where were we lemon cake right so this is looking all right yeah got bits and pieces here i will just very quickly now normally if I was on shoot, I'd use tweezers, but as it's just us, and I'm going to eat this, and my hands are clean, I'm just going to tweak that so we've got a bit of interest in the background. That's fine. The lemons are too straight. Yeah, If you look at these lemons here, they're too straight. You'll notice I will always use odd numbers. 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10 is new. 1, 3, 5, 7. Yeah? All that odd numbers in food photography because it looks more pleasing to the eye. So what I'm just going to do, I apologise for covering your view. But I'm just going to tweak this because I do not like how physically straight they are. So let's just make that. I'll tell you what, let's do that. Let's pop that in there like that. And that little lemon there can then just kind of hit on the side. There we go. Press the button. See... If I was using the live view function, you would be able to see exactly what's going on on the screen. Yeah, now you've lost the lemon completely, so we go further back. It's a building process, yeah? It's a building process. It's working out what looks good. Having an idea of exactly what you want to achieve is fantastic, but it doesn't always work that way. So you might think that doesn't actually work. I'm kind of liking that. Lemons, the highlight on that lemon's a little bit too much. When I say highlight, I mean the bright bits. Uh, what aperture are you using? Uh, right, okay. Yeah, I'm on autofocus. Um, I'm currently set at f5.6, f but that's going to change. Yeah, this is a building process. This is this is very much kind of a um, a work in progress. You never get the shot first time. You prop things, you have a look, you tweak, you play. Yeah, so I'm just going to come back to the camera saying that. I am, Jane. Thank you very much. Uh, what was it for aperture priority? Right, why do I use aperture priority? I shoot in two ways. I will either shoot aperture priority or manual. I'm a control freak. <laughs> so in manual, I have complete and total control over what I'm doing. Um, aperture priority for this purpose is just simple, straightforward, and it's accessible. The whole point of this workshop is that everyone can do it. Yeah? You don't have to have a huge amount of technical knowledge. You don't have to have dirty great flashes with huge octo, you know, two meter octo boxes on them. You don't need to have LED panels. We all have windows. So I'm keeping this simple, straightforward. If you want to shoot in manual, shoot in manual. If you understand manual and you're happy using it, crack on. You know, um, I generally I shoot in manual, but that's because I'm I generally shoot with um, artificial lighting. And I'm going to talk about artificial lighting a little later, and just to preempt anybody's question. So into my little um, shot here. Yeah, that's okay, actually. Now, what I have done is saying I'm an aperture priority. Let's take it back. I was slightly overexposed. So I'm just going to take it back to what the camera thinks is correct. And here we have 
what's that, F5.6, uh, F5.6, can't see the shutter speed, F5.6 at an eighth of, a, uh, eighth of a second. That's not bad. So we've managed to retain the highlight in that lemon. You see that lemon top left? Yeah, we've managed to re retain that highlight slightly. I'm not loving this angle. This angle, I'm, I'm not sure about it. The back, you know, so I'm just going to tweak the camera down a bit. Ca camera's coming down. Very important when you're using a tripod, um, extend your legs before anything else. Yeah, the centre columns are great, but the more you extend your centre column, the bit that goes up and down in the middle of the tripod, <laughs> just to clarify, the centre column's great, but the higher you take your centre column, the more unstable your camera becomes. So use your tripod legs, extend them before anything else, and use the centre column as a last, last adjustment, final adjustment, yeah? So let's just do that. That's still a bit high for my liking. And that lemon on the top is just slight oh that's quite nice that lemon at the top is just slightly still too bright in the highlight now my point of focus is just on the top ridge of that there we go top ridge of that lemon cake if you can see on the screen so where the top of the cake is my point of focus is on that top line you can see bits of that lemon zest coming in um, you can, there's a little bit of burn something on the right hand side. I'll clone that out later. That'll be my post process tweak. Um, but no, I'm, with how that's looking, I'm quite happy. Um, there's a big gap in that background though. If you, if you can see, you've got the lemon cake, you've got the lemons on the left, and that lovely piece of fabric on the right. It's a bit dark for my liking as well. I'm going to open that up a bit, extend it, um, increase the shutter speed, give it a longer time. Take it back to, a, I don't know, quarter of a second, something like that. But those lemons are in the wrong place. I've got a lot of gappage here. Yeah, don't like that. So let's have let's use a different lemon because that lemon's a bit weird looking. So let's put him here. It's always good to have bits on hand. Yeah, I've got my extra lemon. I've got my cut lemons. I've got my, um, my grater. Have everything ready. Don't be chasing around. It makes your life really simple, really straightforward. And you're far less stressful, trust me. Trust me, trust me, trust me. I was going to put those just there. Right, that's changed and you can't see the lemons. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very quickly move those back a little bit further onto the edge of the fabric. I just want to fill this gap between the back of the cake and the background. How are we doing? Any questions? I believe, um, yes, it is, Steve. It is, it is, it is. Other brands are available. Uh, it's an art, it's a, yeah. It's a trigger, it's a joystick handle. Could you use any, yes, you could use any tripod with a ball in the socket as long as it's sturdy, yeah? I've had this about 12 years and I absolutely adore it and it's sturdy and it's hefty. But you can use any tripod, yeah? You can hand hold if you want, but you don't necessarily, you're not going to get that, um, that stability. So loving that. Let's try that. See how that looks. Now, lemons are still a little bit. So, oh, well, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to tweak the plate. Right. Aperture, priority, depth of field. No, back to where it was. As soon as you take your point of focus, so where your camera focuses, as soon as you take that focus off of a parallel line, your depth of field changes completely. So let's just have a quick look. The angle, the angle, the angle. What was the question? So would you always use? No, um, there are three ways you shoot food. Earlier on, I went really low and you shoot head on to the subject. So there's three ways you shoot food. You shoot head on, so you're level with it, and we're gonna do that in a second. I've got another thing to play with that we can look at in a second. So you shoot head on. You then shoot, I tend to shoot 45 degree angle down, or aerial, shooting from above. Flat lay, some people call it, some people call it an aerial shot, some people, some people call it a top shot, yeah. So the traditional, the ways that most people shoot, if you look through uh, food magazines, if you look at um, advertising images, you know, um, in and around media, on social medias, you'll see 
you're either going to get head on, so you're level with your subject. This cake, by the way, is what I would call my hero. So this is like the hero of the shot. This is the main subject. This is what we need to be 100% about. So you'd be 40, you'd be head on to the hero. You'd be 45, 45 degree angle coming down as like more slightly less, but an angle coming down on it. Or you go parallel and aerial, so you shoot down on it. A top shot, an aerial shot, a flat lay, however you want to call it. Yeah, looking down that way. You like the look of uh, portrait. Okay. So portrait, yeah, I mean, shooting in portrait is always a good way to go. Um, are you using any extra lighting? No, this is purely my two meter by one and a bit meter window. Yeah, this is a big window. Um, I live in the first floor flat. I'm quite high. Quite, this is south facing, so I get a lot, lot of light. Can't you just can see my hair? It's not pretty. So you can, uh, you get a lot of light coming in. Wouldn't it be better to move the plate away from the gap? To it? Nice idea. Nice idea. As I said, we, this is one of these things. This is one thing that we're just playing with. So, yeah, I'm just trying to show you how it could be done. How you choose to move things is entirely up to you. So. I'm actually just going to move those there. Make that a little less. Right, so this. Yeah, I like that. So fabric's there. Now the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to bring a little bit of interest coming into the front of the frame. Firstly, gratage. It's going to get a little bit of this zest and just put it around my plate. Because you can see in the foreground of the image here, dead space, yeah? Don't like that. Let's go with some, a bit of grated, and I'll just get a little bit of that zest on top of the cake. Some fresh zest always works. Take that off the fabric. There we go. So there we have, and do you know what? Might even just pop that in there. Let's just see how that looks. Too much. The grate is too much. But you kind of get the idea, yeah? So we've got all that lovely lemon zest around. Yeah? I'm going to pull that fabric around a bit and just buff up a little bit to fill that gap. Grate is coming out. Right. I'm happy with that look. Okay, I'm happy with the look. So the focal length of the lens, someone's just asked at 70 mil, full end. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play the exposure. You have quite nice soft shadows. What are you, what if you're getting, aha, right. Kind of glad today is a bit overcast. Um, if you are getting really harsh shadows, what you can do, um, you can get yourself um, a diffuser. So diffuser is a big, generally either kind of rounded rectangle or a round thing, something like this. This is a small one. I've got um, some very large ones, but I haven't used it today because it would interfere with our shot. I'd have bits of these, like a metre and a half of these all over the place and be able to see what I'm doing. So you can put a diffuser in front of your window. Um, white baking paper, tracing paper, anything that's gonna just soften down that amount of light. You can get these um, on, I believe on Camera World's website, big ones, reflectors, uh, sort of shoot, shoot through diffusers type of thing. And they literally, they just soften the light down. So this bit of board here is a reflector. And what I'm just gonna show you without the reflector in there, it's quite a bit of shadow. There we go, shoot again. You know, quite a bit of shadow, put the reflector board in. What that's doing is that's taking the light from the window and because I've folded it, bouncing it back at a nice angle. So let's see how that's looking. There we go, nice. Now I'm quite, quite liking that, but what I think I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to tweak. 
You're welcome, Mark Woodward. Yeah, I've got nice, quite nice soft shadows, but as I said, you put a diffuser in there and you're going to get even nicer shadows. So what I'm going to do now, my aperture is set at f5.6. My shutter speed is a sixth of a second. So that, that is what the camera feels is correct. Okay, so that's correct camera exposure. That's aperture priority. I'm going to flick into manual because um, you see, you, there's a way you can adjust your shutter speed and aperture priority. But if we go, I'm going to go into manual because this is kind of she's my happy place. Cool. No, Mark. No, that's a really good point. So I'm reading the comments. It's a really good point. The amount of shots that you go through to get it right. Live view. Uh, using your live view screen. Building as you go. Um, I'm I'm working on uh, on a remote basis at the minute, so I'm using um, the EOS utility to then um, transmit onto Zoom or Ecamm or something like that, so that my clients can then see what I'm building as I build it. Really useful. So you, you can take loads of shots and then discard them, or you can just build as is. But when you're looking at a screen, you're not necessarily going to see your exposure effect. If you change your aperture, what's going to happen? If you change your shutter speed, what's going to happen? Yeah, so by taking an image and then reviewing it on a screen like this, you've then got more of an idea of what's happening. I'm loving that lemon zest, by the way. That little um, burnt bit, I don't know it's burnt bit or something, that kind of dark area on the right-hand corner of the front of the cake is annoying me, but we'll get rid of that in post. That's fine. So what I'm going to do, I'm in manual. I was f5.6. And I will go back down to where I was, which was second. That's too dark. I want to be able to get a bit more light in that background. First and foremost, I want more depth of field. Um, I want to see more of that, uh, that zest on the top. So I've gone to FA, F5 point, so um, six of a second, I'm then going down to 0.3 of a second. So hear that shutter going really slow. This is why we need a tripod. Yeah, that's better. You see more of the detail coming in. I'm just going to move that dish over because it's not quite central and it's annoying me. <laughs> Control freak. So F8. A bit more of a tweak. There you go. Um, and then what I'm going to do, I just want to take, I want to increase the exposure by about a stop. So from a third of a second, I'm going to go down to just under a stop half a second and see how that looks. Yeah, right, cool. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned, my white balance. My white balance is auto. Auto gives you, in daylight, it's actually quite good. If you set your white balance to daylight and the sun goes behind clouds and it comes in, it comes out, you end up in shade, your colours are going to be all over the place. You can use custom white balance, for those of you who are going to preempt a question, um, but custom white balance is... You, you have to reset your, your custom white balance setting every time you take a shot, the split second before you take a shot. Auto white balance has a really good tolerance. Obviously, I'm shooting in RAW, so through, um, uh, through the RAW, uh, RAW editor, um, you've got lots of control. Um, and I've had a play recently with, with uh, Canon's DPP, uh, uh, Digital Photo Professional, Having watched another live from uh, sort of one of my colleagues that's been doing these, he said it's the best raw converter out there. And you know what? I agree. I've started to play with it, and it's really, really good. So if you're shooting in raw, you've got flexibility, tweakability factor, I call it. You've got a little bit of room. Yeah, you've got a little bit of that leeway. So I'm quite happy with that. I think I've got the shutter speed about right. I'm happy with the exposure. So what I always do, and this is where people think I'm a little bit crazy. Press the shutter button to take the shot, halfway autofocus, hand goes in front of the shot, so I get that. So I know from there on in, I'm ready to shoot. So that's my shot. Yay! Finished shot. Next shot, you can't go after... Well, do you know what? Will you ever do a shot tilt and shift? Do you know what? Um, I wish I had a tilt and shift lens, uh, Will. Um, Canon, hello. 
tilt and shift. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. I don't know. I've not used I've not used tilt and shift. Uh, but to be honest with you, I'm quite happy um, using the the functionality I have on here. I've shot with 5.4 with large with large format, so you've got that tilt and shift functionality years ago. But no, um, never had the opportunity to shoot food with a tilt and shift. But who knows? Uh, cut a slice. Yeah, do you know what? Let's cut it. I like that. Let's get a knife. This is, a, I told you, it's a collaboration. It's a team effort, guys. Thank you for jumping on board. Welcome to my studio. Oh, told you, things go wrong. We're all live. So, I'm cutting it. This is it. No going back. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take... Oh, that is so moist, it's ridiculous. A couple of slices, it's so moist. I've put some ground almonds in this to give it a bit more moistness as well. And it's so moist, it's actually fallen apart. So I don't know if this is gonna work particularly well. But let's just um, put the sharp thing out of the way. No. So, yeah, you can see it's falling apart. So what we'll do, if we just gently move that back. Ping, ping, ping. I uh, like the idea of... Yeah, the whole hand thing, it's just so I know when, I've, when I'm done, it's my... <sighs> I'm dyslexic, so I work from a position of logic. And you think, oh, which shot is it? Which shot is it? And you just put a hand in front of me and cling, and then I know that's where I need to start from in my edit. I can get rid of all the other dross beforehand. So I'm just going to move him out of the way. I don't want him. That's my cup of coffee in a little bit. Mmm, cake. Right. <laughs> if anybody is in Basing Stoke and wants a piece of cake, sorry, we're in lockdown, you can't have any. Um, that's going to annoy me. So I just want to get rid of all these little crumbs. And do you know what? A little bit of crummage now and again is quite nice. Uh, if the cake. No, that will work better. Yeah. So I've just turned the cake slightly. I need to move the plate a little bit. But what I think I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave that. That's not going to faff around with this too much. Normally, you'd have a stunt cake as well. Normally, you'd have two cakes on the go. Um, so you've got stunt cake. Love it. Uh, that's what, that's what, they, what stylists call it. They call it stunt cake. So when it goes wrong, you've got another one to work with. Um, let's just go down, point the focus down here. I'm going to wind the aperture back down. I'm going to go to F4. So what we've got now, a bit darker, but the point of focus is on that slice of cake. I'm just going to turn it around a little and just... Actually, where's my piece of stunt cake? I'm going to break a bit of this off. Do you know how much willpower it's taking not to chow down on this, guys? It really is. So let's just use that as a bit of a prop. There we go. And do you know what? It's actually quite good. Yeah, absolutely. You know, these are things that you can play with. And having a cup and a saucer, I could spend an hour going through options of how you could set this up. This is simple, straightforward, easy, yeah? No messing around. No kind of over, um, over complicating. I'm just giving you ideas. And there is actually going to be a competition, so you guys can put your um, ideas and your your skills and your um, and your your styling ideas into practice but we'll talk about that in a moment so yeah I'll come back in here let's just put that back down there you can see how moist that is it really is ridiculous so let's just take do you know what where's my mouse because the other joy of using this software is I can adjust the shutter speed manually so I don't have to get in your way 
there you go brighter lighter not how i imagined it going but hey it's good um if we have more time i will be getting out plates and cups and saucers and stuff like that and doing that but hey not this precise moment in time but you get the idea yeah i would normally spend a couple of hours on one shot um yeah by the time you've kind of cooked it and the stars and you know styling a shot can take half hour 45 minutes to an hour if not more you know you try things you put stuff in you take it away but this is me giving you ideas of what you can do at home i wouldn't have got that far the cake would have... <laughs> cake would have gone with it andrea well i'll tell you what the stunt piece mm. sorry eating and working is not i don't normally work eat when i'm working because i don't know you know but i've cooked this so it's fine so what we're going to do I'm going to strip this back now and we can do something else. Are we happy with what I've gone through so far? Are there any questions? Yeah, I know the plate's a bit off centre calf, but, um, you know, it's... Um, I don't always like things centralised. Yeah. I'm working at a pace here with you guys. I'm, I'm not taking my time. I'm giving you and I'm giving you ideas, so I'm probably being a little bit slapdash, to be honest. Um, using a cheese... Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'll order one from Amazon and it'll arrive in about six weeks. Cheese wire, good shout. Yeah, the F4 darker shot's working quite well. Right, are there any compositional tools? Yeah, I mean, there's lots of different compositional tools. Um, lots of people use the rule of thirds. Those who don't know what the rule of thirds is, uh, you draw four lines across your image and you can get the rule of thirds on, um, on your live view screens. And your viewfinders, those of you that have electronic viewfinders, so the OSR, SRP, and the more, um, and the M series. But rule of thirds, you look through your viewfinder and you either in your mind or using your grids, draw four lines. One, two, three, four. So you equally divide the frame into nine rectangles. I say squares, but it's rectangles. So you've got Two vertical lines, two horizontal lines, and it breaks your image into nine equal sections. The idea is then that important parts of your composition then sit where those lines cross. Yeah. So that's the that's the idea. I don't always it doesn't always work for me. Nine times out of ten, I'll break my image into three sections. So if it's a landscape, if it's a portrait image. Then I've got three sections and I can have part of the subject, <clears throat> excuse me, two thirds and a bit of space on the right. Or I'd break it down um, into, uh, so I'd get two vert sorry, t horizontal lines. So you've got one, two, three sections. And that's what well, I might have, a, might, have some, um, might have some dead space in the top, uh, some negative space in the top. So for a recipe, the recipe can go in there, some copy can go in there. For a magazine at the bottom, they can put their title, blah, blah, blah. Um, shot a cook, I was working on a farmer's cookbook recently, and for the cover, they were very specific about how much space they needed. So I was literally having to translate how much physical space was needed into how that looked on the screen and, and how that, you know, how I could actually get that into the composition. Rule of thirds, you've got the golden triangle. You know, you can Google these, there's loads and loads and loads of them. I tend to like to have things on on diagonals. That's quite nice to have things. If you've got a little pan, um, a handle, tiny little frying pan, the Americans, I believe, refer to them as skillets, and you just have them with little cookie or cake stuff in them, have them going in opposite directions, but at diagonals. Knives and forks, cutlery going at angles that lead you in from the left-hand corner. Yeah, it's things you pick up, things you play with. Um, right, so I'm going to clean this down. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, am I, t am I teasing you guys with my lovely moist lemon cake? Is it, oh, don't put it away. Right. So I'm just going to very quickly get my tea towel. I'm just going to get all of this off of here. The vacuum can deal with this later, but I'll get the majority of it off. That's a novelty as well. No matter how much mess you make in the studio, there's always someone else to clear it up. I'm very conscious now, working at home, working remotely, how much mess I make, because i got to clear it up. Where are we? We're good. Right. 
very quickly, my kids bought me this for Father's Day a little while ago, and this is a tip, okay? I have a big bowl, yeah? Quite a deep bowl. Try and fill that with popcorn. It's a popcorn bowl. Try and fill that with popcorn. Not going to happen. You need like two bags of popcorn. So you would take a little bowl, put that upside down. Mmm, cunning, huh? So literally, put that down there, fill your popcorn up, and we're going to do the hero shot. I'm very fond of time. How are we doing so far, ladies and gents? Any questions? Get Alan, share this by all means. Please share, 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 share. And I will actually be back here next week, next Tuesday at 10.30, because today is... Who said men can't multitask? Pouring popcorn and talking at the same time. Um, today is all about available light. Yeah, and next Tuesday... Camera World and Canon very kindly invited me back, and I'm going to be using artificial lights. We're going to talk about flash. I'm going to talk about using what you have available at home. Yeah, because you can get some really, I mean, daylight's great, but we live where we live. I was hoping for sunshine today, and it's grey and overcast of mine, so I'll be doing artificial light um, next Tuesday at 10.30 on this channel, but we'll be talking about that. Uh, there'll be lots of ads and stuff going out. Um, Anita, yes, you will be able to watch this back on the Camera World Facebook page shortly after it's, um, shortly after I finish waffling, I believe. So there we go. So this, ideally I'd wanted a little bit more popcorn or a larger bowl, but I'm just going to show you this very quickly. Yeah, use a, a circle, absolutely fine. This is how I've been this is how I've always done this. You know, let's just put that a little bit like that. And it is quarter past 11 in the morning, so I'm not gonna open this. But if I'm having popcorn, generally I'm watching a movie, so we'll have one of those. Obviously other brands are available and I'm not opening it because at quarter past 11 in the morning, that would be irresponsible. <laughs> so let's just, Open that up a little bit. There's your background. Focus point is where it says Daddy's Popcorn, because that's what we want to be the focus point. Bit of popcorn in the foreground. This is where you wing it. Yeah, I don't actually like that. Let's go in there. Um, there are ways to make bottles look like they've come out of um, fridges. Spray it with a little bit of matting spray, and then get a... Um, uh, a little spritzer bottle, half water, half glycerin solution, and that stays on there forever. And it looks like your bottle has permanently come out of the fridge and you're not losing um, your your condensation. A bit more. It's a bit rubbish there. Just one little bit there. So I am F4, a bit more in frame. Look at that lovely shadow. I don't know if you can see that shadow there. Bottled further back, and there we go. Daddy's popcorn. I've only had this about a year. <laughs> I've never got around to shooting with it, but I think when we're done, I'm going to be going across the road getting more popcorn and playing with this. But this is how simple it can be, guys, yeah? It's not a matter of having oodles and oodles and oodles of kit, yeah? It's a tabletop, a camera, a window. Obviously, the larger your window, the better it is. And for reference, the closer you are to your window, the more contrasty and the more harsh your shadows are going to be. The further you are away from your light source, your window, the softer it's going to be. Okay? Um, you can put a diffuser, like I said, big, one of these, I've got my cake on it now, uh, one of these big, you know, um, uh, sort of diffuser rings that folds down. Um, collapsible and you can put that I tend to put it on a lighting stand clip it next to my table set so here it would be literally on the edge here when I'm shooting but you'll see a lot more of that next Tuesday when I do the um, the artificial lighting so 20 past 11 are there any questions that I've missed yeah shame about the shadow created by the monitor but I need the um need that for you to be able to see what's going on. Um, I'll try and rework it. I have a very small environment 
and to try and get everything set up is it's been a challenge. But hey, we're at home, you know, we, we improvise, we work with what we've got. Uh, is the brick background recommended as a generic? No, do you know what? I just love that. That's not, you can use, I've got a piece of white board behind here. Yeah, it's literally just white board. And if you just, if we shoot that and you look at the screen, Yeah, there's shadow from the the Mac, but hey, never mind. You know, you get but you get the idea. Yeah, well, this is a kind of a how-to rather than a it's going to look perfect. Can you at some time in the future do shots with steam? As I find catching steam difficult. Well, um, ask the guys at Camera World. Um, yeah, if I I will do whatever I'm asked. So any requests or stuff you want to do, then by all means. Shoot them over to Camera World, and I will get those. Um, next week, we're going to be looking at using Flash. I'm going to be using the Canon Speedlight systems um, and the type of light you'd have knocking around at home. So things like your, you know, um, your desk angle poise lamp. Some of you have LED lamps knocking around, so we can do stuff like that. So, uh, photo ball, yeah, okay. Thank you, Shamila. Yeah, this is a home shoot. I'm not saying to, you know, I work from home. I have been working from home for the last six weeks and it is carnage because, you know, normally people don't have, you know, people don't see all of this. My clients will see what's going on through my camera lens, through the software. So normally I'd have all sorts of stuff everywhere. But if I showed you that, you wouldn't be able to see me. And yeah, it's just not happening. So, <laughs> but um, this has been, hopefully this has been helpful. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this and it's inspired you to get your camera, whatever camera you may have, um, and start using it. So we've all got, I'm sure people have got leftover bananas. I've seen so many banana cakes on Instagram and Facebook and stuff recently. So make yourself a cake, have a bit of fun. Yeah, um, I'm chatting to someone earlier and um, there's talks of espresso martinis being made to take pictures to practice. Obviously, take the pictures before you drink the martinis, otherwise it's going to go a little bit, yeah? Uh, or make them virgin, whichever. So, competition. You have learned a little bit about all this. Um, Camera World and Canon have, um, have asked me to kind of put something out there to you. So taking inspiration from today, Okay, what you've learned with me, using available light only, yeah? Big windows, natural light, your window light, not flash, not LED lights, not your, you know, your angle poise. Um, I'd like you to take a picture of food, yeah? Doesn't need to be a cake, doesn't need to be popcorn, doesn't need to be, you know, whatever you happen to be cooking, take a picture of it, take, take some time, yeah, set your table up first, then when your food's ready, you can go to it straight away. Little tip, food, photographing food, it's often best when it's kind of warm rather than hot. But there we go. Um, and um, Camera World are going to post into the comments anytime now an email address where you can send your photographs. I believe you have until 10.30 on Tuesday, the 12th of May. That's 10.30 next Tuesday to get your, um, your entries in. I think it's images at camerawell.co.uk. Um, and then um, if you decide to post these on your social medias, um, hashtag camerawelldfood, I believe. But again, uh, I know the Camera World team are going to stick that. I'm looking at the screen to see what's... There we go. There we go. Thank you, Krista. Camera World are all over it. So all the information's in there. I know Camera World are also going to put out information um, over their social medias and kind of shout about this competition. Great. Competition, what I win. Canon have very kindly offered five prizes, and they are these rather cool um, surprise um, uh, goodie bags. So much for surprise, even I don't know what's in them. Um, so um, five winners will be chosen. I think I will get these images sent to me, and I will be part of, of, of uh, the judging process. So, yeah. Um, hopefully, you guys have liked that. If there are any burning questions, throw them into the comments, yeah? I will be going back through the comments because, as you can see, I've been chasing around like a blue tail. What's it? Trying to see, um, trying to do this and also keep an eye on the, um, on the comments. But hopefully this has been useful. Hopefully I've inspired you all to get out there. Get out there. Stay indoors. Don't go out. Um, you know, to get into your kitchen, get into your dining rooms with your camera. 
and have a go. Yeah, doesn't matter what camera you've got. You can have one of these. You can have like a 300 pound compact camera. You can have a 20 quid compact camera. Whatever you have, play with it. Yeah, if you're using a compact camera, try your um, uh, the C mode, so the little portraity mode, because that or the macro mode, and that will help to blur the background. So anyway, if there are no further questions, well, there's lots of questions, but I can't get to them right now. I hope you've enjoyed today, guys. Thank you very much indeed. I will see you next week, 10.30, Tuesday, same place, same time for the, um, the artificial light workshop. Um, stay at home, stay safe, look after yourselves, take some pictures, and I look forward to seeing your food images um, sent through for the competition. Good luck, have fun. Thanks for watching. Take care. And we'll turn it off then. Ciao.